I'm waiting for Felix to tell me to go. All right, okay. so, well, yeah, why don't you start with an introduction with all you guys? Okay, hi, uh, this is the one hand seminar that Felix was nice enough to put on, so I guess we can give him a round of applause. Um, I'm Jeremy Fleischman, this is Ro Hester, this is Bill Yu, and uh, we're going to talk about one hand a little bit. I guess Anthony wants Ro to talk, so I can give him the mic. Give that. He's putting up your name. <laughs> uh, so, I, one hand's not all that different from two hand, right? Um, so, the only interesting stuff I think we can talk about is like how we turn the cube, and I, I don't know. Yeah, okay, and we can talk about the types of cubes we use. So, I use a zanchi that I put shock oil in. Yeah, how about you, Ro? Ro uses a guhong. You, you should say something about your cubes, right? Don't you have a whole shot? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you, you guys can like pass the microphone, you know? Uh, can you? I think it's attached to the podium. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Never mind. Uh, I use a mini zanchi. This thing just came out uh, a couple days ago, and it's smaller than the average cube, so for the people that have small hands, uh, I really recommend trying this out, because it's much easier to turn. Uh, um, I use a Guhong, it's really old. Um, yeah, a lot of people like loose cubes, I guess, uh, for a week. But uh, believe it or not, I like, I like tiger cubes for one hand, I like more control of my cube. So, I mean, it changes, uh, it's really just find a cube that fits your one hand style, really. That easy. Oh, you want? Okay, I'll go first. Fine. All right. Um, so I'm a righty. Um, a lot of people use their offhand, so I actually write with my left hand. Um, I think I picked it up like with I was in lecture theoretically taking notes, so I had the cube in my other hand. Um, so yeah, like I grip with my thumb, middle finger, and ring finger sort of all at a 45 degree angle, and that sort of leaves my pointer and pinky fingers free to turn the left side and the top. So. Like, if, you, if a righty wants to do a U-turn, you just pull. It's pretty natural. And then the question is, like, how do you do the opposite of that? Like, the first thing I tried to do was, like, use my thumb or something. But this is awful, because it, like, leaves you not holding onto the cube. So I learned to just push, which sort of involves putting your right pointer finger on, like, the R-U-B sticker, and then just, like, extending it. That's pretty hard for people. Um, you gotta need long fingers, maybe, and another thing that's really key is that like your pinky be resting on the D face when you try to do that turn. If you don't, like you just won't be able to reach. So that, and then like you can follow through into an L. So that's kind of useful. And then for the L face, like you can pull with your pinky and you can flick with your pinky. And then I also follow through with my ring finger if I'm doing like an L two. That's about it. The rest is just regrips and some thick turns and. Hi, uh, so I'm a lefty, and I hold this cube the same way uh, Jeremy does, except I do a flick more for the U-turn, so I'll actually put my finger on this sticker over here and turn it like this. So uh, this is a lot harder than pushing, um, because your finger is stretched back more, but this is, I think, faster if you want to move very quickly um, using R and U or L and U for left hand. Uh, but uh, if you're first starting out one-handed, I really recommend learning to do uh, U Anthony, both ways. Do me a favor. Because Can you knowing both ways higher? really helps you be more open to different types of algorithms. Is that your bad? Um, I know I can't do this very well, so algorithms that use this a lot, I can't do, and I feel like I'm missing out. So if you're just starting, I uh, recommend that you learn that question. So, back when I first learned one handed, uh, I kind of taught myself that I didn't have any sources on how to do it. So, I didn't know that the pinky was apparently the best way to do it. Yeah, right here. Um, I used my ring finger for our terms. And for our prime, I used my pinky. <laughs> it makes no sense, <laughs> but it works for me. Um, yeah, I can't. I tried switching the pinky, but uh, it's kind of something you have to do from the start. But, uh, 
Yeah, so ring finger and my U turn to the same as I'm just pushing or clicking. Um, I guess we talk about the solving methods. They use the same as two handed. Uh, uh, CFOP, Rick Rick. Um, That's good. Dangerous. <laughs> but it works. I, think okay. flat I do the exact same thing Row does, except slower, and I only ever start with white. I'm wrong, and I use ZZ. <laughs> so, uh, if you don't know, ZZ is a Polish method invented in 06, okay. and it restricts the cube to LUR, um, that move group, and as a result, you don't really have to move the cube in your hand when you do one-handed, which is a blessing because you can just keep moving without having to stop and turn the cube, um, which sometimes bothers me. So, uh, yeah, so, ZZ is kind of like CFOP in the sense that you build an M2L, but uh, it's restricted so that you can um, do the right side of the M2L with R and U, and you can do a Z rotation and you can reach the left side. So um, the sides are very accessible and uh, very easy to reach. And also ZZ gives you a cross on top always, and um, that allows you to use a lot of cool last layer variants like you know, you can use COLL, and with CD you can also use CLS and winter variation, and sets of uh, the ZB collection, um, because you don't have to worry about getting the top cross, it's already there for you. Um, so if you're adventurous, um, you should check out the ZB method. So uh, do you guys do anything differently when you're practicing one hand versus two hands? Like, do you have any, like, do you practice any certain finger tricks or anything like that? Yeah, um, there are a few things that you can do. Like, one of the really fun things that will drive your, kill your hands is like just doing this sequence of moves over and over again. U, L prime, U, L prime, or if you're a lefty, it would be U prime R. Try to do that in under, like under 20 seconds or something. You can just walk around campus. You don't need to be like looking at the cube or anything, doing this over and over again. And then when you're feeling like, you got that down pretty good. You can try doing um, like just triggers or sexy moves on like the left hand side, which is sort of just like you get to practice all of the finger tricks we were talking about because like you're turning the left side and the top side both counterclockwise and counterclockwise, counterclockwise and clockwise. And another one that I started doing when I tried to learn how to do this pointer flick, which Bill does. Um, so like that that first thing I mentioned, which is like L prime U over and over again, you can try to invert it by doing like U prime L and just flicking all the time. Um, and then if you want to feel even really tricky, you can do flick, flick, push, pull, which practices like all the weird stuff. And you can just do this all day and get decent at it. So those are some exercises that I actually do sometimes consciously decide to do. So I just realized that um, on my YouTube channel, I created a new video on how to increase your one-handed turning speed. Um, some of you have already seen it. It's exercise-based, and you basically practice triggers, um, and you try to link the moves together. So for example, if you're doing uh, R U prime, R prime, um, you try to do the U prime immediately after you do the R. So it trains your coordination, and it allows you to practice moving your fingers one after the other is uh, very important for one-handed. Um, I think getting the physical aspect of one-handed down is very important because once you understand that, you don't have to keep stressing out about it while you're solving. So uh, once you know how to turn, it stays with you forever, which is really nice. I, I, I think that's all we got to say. So are there any questions? Just learning an entire set of one-handed OLO? Uh, well, I, I don't, okay, do you suggest learning an entire set of one-handed OLO? I guess this is like a big thing for me is like one-handed algorithms. Like, a lot of them are just the two-handed algs I do, but maybe like mirrored or inverted, and I didn't really ever, I mean, maybe 
at the time I learned there weren't like websites that had lists of OA challenges, so I just sort of came up with them as I could, and yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. Um, one big thing that always annoys me is people complain about like, you shouldn't do it right-handed because like, you'll have to mirror all your apps. And that's just plain not true. Like, I, Phil said earlier, if you are a righty who needs to do some algorithm that's all ours and U's, all you need to do is a Z prime. You don't have to mirror the up. So, yeah. And uh, even if you do, there are programs online that where you can just type in the out and it will mirror it like six different ways, or invert it and invert the mirror and mirror the invert. And it's pretty nice. It's called the algorithm translator. Um, I think if you Google that, you'll get the algorithm translator. Um, as for my one-handed specific outs, um, all my outs are specifically for one-handed because I don't do anything else. So all my PLL, all my COLL, and pretty much everything I do, I kind of plan um, and optimize for one-handed. So um, as a result, I don't, yeah, I don't know much for two-handed. Um, yeah, I recommend learning different OLLs for some cases because if you have a good solve and a bad case comes up, it sucks. So, yeah, um, most OLLs are okay one handed anyway. It's just like probably five or so that are terrible. So, it's worth learning. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, where do you think, um, in the, like, the near future, where do you think OH is headed? Like, what kind of times do you think we're going to approach? Do you think there's going to be any, uh, anything new that'll really be like a new breakthrough, you know, for a lot of, getting a lot of people faster, things like that? Um, I think when you can go a lot farther, um, CC, the method of uh, I believe more people get into that, uh, I feel like it'd be more beneficial to one you never know, maybe it'll be sub 10 damage. I have a question. Um, so what if you're around the 25 to 30 second range and you're trying to get to sub 20 one handed? Uh, how do you, what do you recommend uh, that people like that focus on to break the 20 second barrier one handed? Okay, well uh, I think there are two cases you can consider. Um, it, I think it really depends on your two-handed times. Uh, if your two-handed times are really, really fast, that kind of suggests that you know how your method works and what you do for, say, your F2L well is pretty efficient. So in that case, I would work on the physical aspect and uh, really just learn how to move, and then you just move and do the same things you do in a two-handed solve, and your efficiency will help propel you uh, your time is down. Uh, if you are not incredibly quick in, like, say, normal solving, um, I think working over your method will benefit more in that range. Uh, any other questions? I said, yeah. Oh. How do you make your algorithms flow? Like, I mean, I'm trying to do the R U from you trying with the algorithm. And it doesn't flow very well, like, I can't really like, put it together. Is the question, how can you make algorithms flow? Yeah. Well, you mess around with them a lot. <laughs> we just showed you a bunch of different finger tricks. So, like, I, I don't know, one interesting thing I discovered not too long ago was, like, on the u perms, you can kind of, like, get away with doing a flick into a push, like there's a part where you need to do a U prime, something else followed by another U prime. So like, there's an opportunity to do a flick and then push. So like, you know, not throwing out any finger tricks is a neat way of doing it. And then like, if the algorithm just plain doesn't work, you go to Cube Explorer and find another algorithm, or you invert the algorithm you know, or mirror it or something. Like, each algorithm you know can be done like eight different ways if you mirror it. And Invert it. So, yeah. okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I find that uh, sometimes when I'm practicing one-handed a lot, um, my my hands tend to hurt a lot. Um,
Do, do you have like any way to prevent that, or do you have anything like regarding that? Any experiences? Yeah, I'm not so broke to that. Uh, I I puke too much, I guess. I feel a lot of pain when I solve one handed too much. Um, the best thing to do is not to, when you practice and you don't have a competition the next day and you're practicing for the long term, it's best not to push yourself too hard to the point where you injure yourself. This is, I think it's very easy to do that one handed because your hand receives a lot of stress. So um, if you're getting very, very tired, I suggest just taking a break. Perhaps you can do some other events and you can come back to it. Um, usually, I'll practice twice a day, like in the morning, and then in the evening, and then sleep on it, and I'll be fine the next day. Um, I find my hand hurts most when I don't practice much, and I pick it up and I do one to stop. So, uh, say I practice like every few days, so I just stop for like a month. Um, I haven't done it for like two months. I did a few songs the other day. And after five songs, I'm done. So, All right. just uh, keep practicing it, and eventually it'll, it'll go away. Okay. Any other questions? All right. And I, I guess on a closing note, um, it's really hard to talk about this stuff in lecture format. It's way easier to talk one on one. So if you have like specific questions or even general questions, like I'd love to just sit down and watch you do a solve and I can like point out stuff that I don't agree with or find interesting. And yeah, that, that's really the best way to talk about cubing. This is an awkward, kind of an awkward format, but yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming. I, I guess that's it. Yeah.